Hey folks, government workers across South Africa are threatening to shut down public services as part of a strike because of wage disputes. So let's get started with this report from ENCA and see what's going on. Growing concerns about uh, the stayaways, which I think are in a way these lunchtime stayaways, am I right? Um, which is the lead up to this potential strike by the civil service. Just explain how it's all going to work. That's right, Sir, Sally. There are growing concerns and uh, people can expect disruptions at car licensing offices and border posts on Thursday. And those are just some of the services that will be hit when government workers belonging to the Public Servants Association embark on a one-day stayaway on Thursday. So workers have rejected government's 3% wage increase and the PSA uh, says that Thursday's stayaway will impact uh, several government departments, as I've just mentioned there, the ports of entry. We've got Gavin Kelly, who's the chief Chief Executive Officer at the Road Freight Association joining me now to discuss the potential impact, if any. Thank you very much for joining us this evening, Gavin. I mean, uh, the ports of entry, particularly at this time of year, are crucial because we've got imports and exports of products that will uh, really feed the festive season and the economic growth uh, during the season. Um, but from your end, are there any concerns that have been expressed by your members as yet? Good evening, Rupiwe, and good evening to all your viewers. I mean, you know, this comes on the back of what we saw happening at the ports with Transnet. So any sort of delay or stoppage in the logistics chain really is not a good thing. And we don't know exactly what's going to happen right now. I think we're all on tenter hooks. But definitely our members are very, very worried. They ask on a daily basis, well, they actually ask every hour if we've heard how the ports are going to be dealt with when this public sector strike starts, whether the alternative arrangements, because this is really going to be bad news for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then just to give our viewers a sense of the gravity of the um, destruction of these stoppages, how long does it usually take after destruction, whether it be from strike or other events that we've seen previously, does it take to clear up the backlog? And do uh, your members find themselves having to throw away some products that uh, didn't survive waiting to get through the different posts? Something I want to clarify here is that when they talk about destruction with regard to strikes, that isn't just metaphorical. In South Africa, striking when you don't get what you want has become a cultural norm uh, to the extent that this happens annually. And our media refer to periods of striking as strike season. So this is something we've been dealing with for many years now. But the fact is, South Africa is on its last legs, economically speaking. The coronavirus lockdown was disastrous. It really, it was like a nuclear warhead hitting our economy. And while you may say that that is true of any country that locked down because of the coronavirus, South Africa's economy was already struggling prior to that, because I don't think I need to remind you, this is in fact still a third world country. We didn't have resources to fall back on, and our tax base, the actual number of people in South Africa who pay tax, is rapidly shrinking, while our population itself is only increasing. This is why the government cannot afford to give big increases in salary or wages to government staff simply because there is no money. Now, yes, a lot of the money that there is is stolen through political uh, corruption, but the fact remains there's only so much and it only goes so far. Well, it's a bit of a difficult question to answer because if the delay is only a couple of hours, then it's really just a little blip in the radar in terms of the flow of goods. But if this becomes anything in the range of a day, so let's talk about a 12-hour working day, mm. or it becomes more than that, then we start to have real, real issues. So what happens is there's a fair amount of goods that travel up and down the various routes within Africa and within South Africa that are time-sensitive. 
And time sensitive doesn't only mean that they could be perishable goods like fruit and vegetables and foodstuffs, which need to be in a cold chain process and need to get to their various points of loading or offloading, depending where they are in the whole process of manufacturing and deliver, obviously. So they could be refused by those who were going to get those goods or by those manufacturers. So that can have a huge impact because what do you do with those goods and how do you know you'd get the next set of goods in that scenario there? Then there's also the time sensitive goods in terms of ship sailings, in terms of aircraft flying, when we're doing exports or imports, whichever way we're going to go. So that also has a major impact in terms of manufacturing, in terms of sales, in terms of revenue generation, and you now have trucks standing around that normally have either picked up their goods or delivered their goods, turned around and then gone back for the next load. So you start to find trucks standing around. We saw this recently down at the port of Durban, and that then has an impact. And that very quickly can become a lot of money for our country in lost income, but a lot more in terms of damages and loss of earnings. And I suppose it's a double whammy there, Gavin, because uh, these uh, your members are also grappling with higher operating costs. So the idea that they're going to have to fund alternative plans and the losses that could potentially be made here is not something that the industry can handle uh, at the moment, just given a history of disruptions that we've seen throughout, one would say, the last two years or so. Yeah, Rafiwe, I think we've seen a horrible year. I think the, the recently deceased queen used to talk about an annus horribilis. I think we've had about two of those back to back mm. in terms of what has done, in terms of the protests we've seen, and obviously the fuel prices that we've seen recently over the last couple of months have really, really put a lot of transporters into a very tight corner. There are a number of them that just cannot take another couple of delays. These three or four days, whatever it might turn out to be, might in actual fact be that final nail in the coffin for those who were hanging on desperate that the festive season would have brought some sort of relief to them. What I can also tell you is that whenever strikes of this nature take place, the people who, who uh, participate in these strikes, even if they force their employers, in this case government, but it also happens in the private sector, even if the striking workers force their employer to pay the amount that they want in wages, because that's invariably what these strikes are about, it's always about money. They never make up their lost earnings, because generally speaking, in South Africa, if you don't work, you don't get paid. So even if they get the increase that they're demanding, what they lose in the days of the strikes when they aren't working cancels out the increase anyway. So it really is just absurd and destructive. And very briefly, Gavin, and finally, uh, have you found that your members have had to let some people go uh, just to deal with the gravity of the losses that they've experienced? There has been that happening over the last couple of years, yes. And obviously nobody likes doing that. There have been some uh, employees who have been let go on the hope that they can uh, stop the sort of expenses that are happening and the hemorrhaging and when things get better to get them back into that business again. It's always a very tough decision to make. A tough one indeed. Gavin, as always, thank you very much for those insights. That is the Chief Executive Officer at the Road Freight Association joining us to speak about the potential implications of that stay away coming on Thursday, but subsequently the strike that is said to uh, also happen should government not change uh, its wage off. And they have released a note to their workers saying that uh, the Minister of Finance was very clear in that the fiscus is constrained and this is what government can do for now. So, I have a personal story with regard to the impact of a government strike. As I've told you in previous videos, because of my quadriplegic cerebral palsy, I receive a welfare grant on a monthly basis from the government. And I first got on this grant, or applied for it, when I was 17. Back then, the entire applications process only took one day. I was in, 
I was out. It was done. Then, um, about three years ago now, um, I had to reapply for the grant because the decision was made to cancel all social welfare grants because of the mass corruption in which government staff were creating false accounts and claiming government money as if they had disabilities or children to look after when they actually did not. So I had to go and reapply. In the space of that time, from the time of me being 17 into my late 20s, the application process was extended from one day to four months, largely because there were no state mandated doctors working at the time to certify people as disabled. So that took four months to get done. And I can remember uh, during the last days of the reapplication process, I happened to go down to the social welfare office on a day when they were on strike. Now, it was something I'll never forget because when they went on strike, they were singing and dancing and having a great time together while people in need were struggling and had come for help. I'm not even talking about just myself. Mostly, it was all people. And what you have to understand about South Africa is one of the only means of public transport is to take private minibus taxis across the various cities. In my case, Durban. And when my mother and I were trying to enter the social welfare office, one of the striking workers literally smiled in our faces as she slammed the gate. So I will never forget the joy that people like this take in disrupting the lives of others simply because they are greedy and selfish. This is the human impact that occurs when these strikes take place. So it's not just an abstract matter of wage disputes. These people actively mess with the lives of others and they simply don't care about the consequences that their behavior has. So if strikes like this go ahead and they keep happening, soon enough there won't be a country left to strike over and there'll be nothing left for anyone to be paid. Anyway, that's all for now. And for now, farewell.